is uh, quite a complicated story and uh, uh, apologies if you don't follow it, but there are some messages or, or lessons at the end which I hope will uh, make some sense. Um, I'm a radiation oncologist, as Kate says, I'm from Adelaide. By way of background, I'm, I'm 66, I was born in Adelaide, as was the custom in those days with unwed uh, mothers from Western Australia. My mother was dispatched to Adelaide to deliver me, uh, to keep it uh, kind of away from the rest of the, the family. And um, uh, my adoptive parents were about 40 years old at, at that stage, and since uh, passed away. And I have an, an older adopted sister, and we were both told at a young age, which I think is my father. Dan, just put the microphone closer. I think he, um, by far the most sensible way to, uh, to, to manage those sort of uh, issues. And what, what I'm going to be talking about is how I discovered my birth mother, which predated the, the DNA of Europe, and how my donor children discovered me, and how amazingly that led also to the, dis the, the discovery of the identity of my birth father. <laughs> 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 Uh, that's me as a baby. The picture in the upper right there is very poignant to me. That uh, was the day that my birth mother handed me to my adoptive uh, parents. And I wasn't to know it at that uh, stage, three, three, four decades before I would see her again. Grew up uh, enjoying sport, football in particular, and also loving music, piano in particular. I always wondered where, where, they, where they came from. This is my adoptive family, you're looking at four genetically unrelated individuals there, and um, I think even if I hadn't have been told, I, I would have known that, you know, that I was adopted. Um, I didn't really feel like I belonged, although I was very close in particular to my mother. Uh, got married, finished my first university course to become a high school teacher, had two lovely children, unfortunately the marriage didn't survive too long after that. Um, moving on to the, the sperm donation story um, was really because I um, decided to swap careers from uh, teaching to, to medicine in, in 1980 um, and donated in my third and fourth years as a medical student. Uh, I was very poor. It was a young family um, studying full time. My wife didn't work mortgage. And in fact, uh, donating was a, a very helpful addition to the uh, the income. In today's dollars at the first clinic it was $40 equivalent to per donation and potentially a couple of times a week for many weeks. It was very helpful. And the second clinic uh, was actually even more generous in the reimbursement. And this was meant to be anonymous so I was not able to, uh, I was not intended to be able to uh, find my donor children and vice versa. But of course this was in the pre-DNA era and as, we just, as we're hearing it's a, bit of a lot different now. Um, I always had the profound <coughs> genetic curiosity of most adopted and donor conceived children to, to know my genetic origins. Um, and it was, but it wasn't, as I said, four decades later, uh, at the age of 41, where I finally discovered my mother, who turned out to be a widow at that, that time living in Melbourne. She told me about a legitimate half brother who lived in Perth, um, but I was not to contact him. Um, she wouldn't tell me about the whereabouts of my biological father. In fact, she gave me a, a false name in order that I wouldn't be able to track him down. It seemed very, very strange, and uh, I'll come back to the, the reason, reasons for that later. This was uh, when I met her in, in Melbourne, um, uh, satisfied the curiosity about the uh, um, music, um, uh, love of um, music. She was an accomplished piano player. Uh, and I kept in contact with her. She's living in Melbourne. I was living in and living in Adelaide. I phoned her regularly, but on one um, occasion, an unfamiliar voice answered the phone. And this turned out to be my illegitimate uh, older half sister. I was actually the second illegitimate child. Um, she'd been looking after the house where while our mother was in hospital recovering from operation. Uh, my sister lives in Canberra, and uh, she didn't know about me either. Uh, all three, of, all three of the children met subsequently in, in, in Melbourne. There's my uh, my half, uh, my illegitimate half sister, uh, and there's my legitimate half brother. 
he, um, for some obscure reason, barracks for Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> His wife barracks for West Coast Eagles. So that was an interesting grand final last year. <laughs> Uh, the big family secret, however, persisted, and uh, my mother died in, in uh, 2015 with uh, that family secret still intact. I'll come back to that in a second. How did my donor children discover me? Well, I'd always wished to, to meet them. Having been adopted myself, um, I had double the genetic curiosity of, of them, not knowing my father or mother's identity initially. Um, and I did register with the two clinics back in 2015, um, but no responses were received. Um, ancestry DNA was becoming popular by that time, although I wasn't sensible enough to sort of realise that if I submitted my DNA to um, Ancestry DNA-like companies, I might actually be able to, uh, to discover them myself. Um, however, in November 2017, I received a, an email from my half-sister she had been contacted by this lovely lady who's here uh, this evening. Her name's Kim, Kim Buck. Um, she's a psychologist, but she's also a, a brilliant artist. Uh, this is not a photograph, this is a charcoal drawing. Uh, spectacularly accurate, isn't it? I, I can't take any credit for that. Her mother is, is an artist. <laughs> um, she had already uh, discovered that uh, a, a donor conceived uh, sibling sister. Uh, I'll explain the reason for the facial blocking in, in a minute, who happened to have a twin brother. And when he had his DNA tested, he was uh, confirmed to be one of the clan as well, reassuringly. Um, at that time, by complete coincidence, this lady called Anne, who lives in Western Australia, had submitted her DNA also to her ancestry DNA for, um, because she just was interested in her family history not knowing of my existence at all. And Rose, uh, from whom we've heard, uh, provided a lot of help to try and sort out the mysteries to around the hell that uh, Kim's um, donor um, fitted into the story. It turned out that uh, Anne and Kim were indeed very close related. They were uh, first cousins once removed, which means separated by one generation. And uh, Kim's donor, namely me, um, must have been Anne's cousin. There were six um, candidates uh, of uh, Anne who were potential sperm donors, but none of them had actually been donors. Uh, so there must have been a secret one, which uh, turned out to be me. <laughs> and fortunately, an elderly relative was still alive at that stage. Um, and she had kept the family secret um, for uh, six de decades or more. It turned out that um, uh, my father and mother had a brief dalliance. Um, they were second cousins, and we think that the, kind of the shame associated with that in those days was why she wanted to keep the whole thing secret. So all of a sudden, there was a new uh, paternal family. Um, this, is, this was uh, from my um, biological father's um, funeral ceremony. Um, and uh, the surviving relatives uh, whom I got to meet in Perth uh, early in 2018. Um, any older Essendon supporters in the audience <laughs> may vaguely recognise this chap. His name is Graham Moss. He played, he was the captain of Essendon in the 70s, a Brownlow medalist and uh, AFL Hall of Famer. Uh, famer. So there were indeed some footy genes in the family. <laughs> I got to meet my paternal um, half brother. And this is a very poignant photograph for me because by chance at that time, he was in the process of selling the house um, in which my father lived. And um, a couple of weeks later, and I wouldn't have been able to, to see what's, to see in, in, in that house, which uh, was a very moving, moving experience for me. Just going back to late 2017, uh, this was the day that I, I first met uh, the, the first three of the donor children. Subsequently, uh, about March 2018, Lauren came along on the right there, and uh, she was also confirmed by Ancestry DNA to be a, one of the clan. And her sister on the left, as we speak, as I speak, um, we're waiting to hear her DNA result as well. She's probably going to be the sixth. <laughs> and then a couple of months later, Nicole um, 
uh, was also confirmed. So that's up to five confirmed at this stage. And there were lo lots of lovely family gatherings. This one was in Adelaide. This was in in, in uh, Sydney. A uh, whole lot of donor grandchildren as well now, eight in fact now. Uh, pleasant afternoons playing with the new grandchildren. And I've had the, the privilege of actually meeting uh, two of the, uh, the, the mothers, um, the, the donor mothers, if, you can, if that's the right term. Um, also a moving experience. And this one's hot off the press. Uh, Jacob is uh, two weeks and one day old. He's the latest addition to the clan. So uh, you can probably tell for me, it's been a very positive experience. Um, not only uh, did it lead to the discovery of my donor children, DNA lead to the discovery of my donor children and, and grandchildren, satisfying their genetic curiosity and um, um, answering some of the medical family history that they have every right to know about. But because of the complicated story, it also led to the same thing with regard to my biological father, satisfying my genetic curiosity as well. Um, you know, complicated ways enhance my relationship with my <coughs> marriage children. Um, and it's all people have commented that I'm now more emotionally responsive than I used to be. Um, and it led to an explosion in uh, musical creativity. Um, as, um, as Kate said, the uh, piece of music playing um, as we were about to start um, it was written in response uh, to this whole process, this whole experience. It's called DC, which stands for Donor Conception or, or Donor Children. Um, and my donor children actually presented me with probably the best um, birthday present I've ever received for my 65th birthday last year. They actually funded um, professional recording of a whole lot of songs that are written since um, since all, all, all this um, occurred. Uh, was it all smooth saying? No. Um, one of my marriage children has been very upset by the whole process, um, uh, having conceptual issues with the whole process of donor conception, um, which completely took me by surprise. Uh, and the other one is only mildly interested. Neither of them have taken the opportunity to meet any of their donor half-siblings at this stage. Um, one of the donor child's brother is still unaware of the whole story, which was the reason for the blackout faces earlier. Another donor's child doesn't want to, want to know about it. Um, and uh, there was in fact some conflict um, between the relatives in Perth when all this story was unfolding um, in, in the manner in which it sort of uh, it happened. Well, um, what, are the, what are the lessons? Um, family secrets uh, clearly can now be discovered. Um, I think in general it's better, as I said, to be told only to be told and to be told the younger, younger the better in general. Um, it's sensible to expect the uh, unexpected. Uh, don't assume that everybody's going to be happy. Expectations need to be realistic. Um, I'm my donor children's biological father, but I'm not their dad. I don't, I don't have, don't share the, the childhood and adolescent experiences that their, their dad uh, did. So, um, for a shy person like me, the whole thing was pretty scary, I'd have to say, um, but it was uh, all worth it, and I would uh, do it all again. Thank you.